Hi there, my name is Nick Russell, and this is a 3DS Max plugin that I developed to help play Hyper Chess. I'm going to run through uh, how to use the plugin and how the pieces move to give an idea of, of how to, the game plays. You can see on the left is a real Hyper Chess board. Uh, these are made by Max Chappell. He sells them locally here in San Diego. So let's start with the pawns. Uh, the pawns have a lot of moves available to them when there's space. Right now, this is the only square the pawn can move is straight forward. Right, and to keep in mind, for white, forward is up, and backwards is down. Right, so the pawn cannot ever move down for white, and for black, the pawns can never move up. So we'll move the pawn here and click on it again. We'll see from here where its moves can be, um, and and we're also not we're not alternating turns at the moment. We're just trying to show how the pieces move. So a pawn normally has five moves available, right? There's the forward move, and then there's these squares next to it, and it can attack to all of the diagonals in between. So if we move this pawn a little bit further over here. And now we'll bring in some of the black pieces to show where it can attack. All right. So this is a diagonal for this pawn it can attack to. Pull down here. Now that is also an attack. Now in total, there, that's eight squares. Right. These three squares it can also attack to. Three. Th these three squares it can also attack to. But we'll go ahead and do one of the attacks, and you'll see. You click on the actual tile you're moving it to, and it's done. Now the piece is gone. It's actually moved down here. All the, that's where all the pieces go for now. Once they've been attacked. But um, let's uh, take a look at the knight. Exact same movements as a normal chess. It moves over two, and then one 90 degree angle. So we'll move down here. You'll see more pieces open up where it can move to. All these highlighted squares are over two, one up, over two, over one. Same deal, and then down here. And it could go down two levels also if uh, that option is available. So from if I move this knight down here, you can see you can tack this rook all the way down here. So you know, as usual, it's it can be pretty sneaky. And one thing that is always difficult to get used to is that vertical distance. It it can be easy to miss a move that's available, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this is so it, you can really get a good idea of how the pieces move. Uh, let's go ahead and get this queen rolling. We'll clear the space out so she can move out of here. See, here's a diagonal she can move, straight line all the way down. Uh, but let's move her all the way down, get a better idea of her moves available. Now it really opens up the capability. She, she has a lot of moving power, as she's supposed to, of course. And all these places she can attack to, highlighted in red. And let's check out the the rooks and the bishops too. All right, so the rooks move in a straight line. Let's uh, move this fella out of the way. Pretty simple, easy to grasp. So I can move him all the way up here, move all the way down there, attack the pawn. Now our bishop. Bishops can be tricky too uh, when you're moving up and down diagonals. It's it's always easy to to lose track of where a diagonal is going vertically and until you've like really gotten used to it. But just keep in mind that it's always the same color. 
you know, if, if my this bishop is on white, it's always going to be on white. So, uh, you know, it can't move up to this square because even though that is diagonal, it's, uh, it's what I call double diagonal. You, you have to go along two diagonals, right, to get to it. Or if you want to get a little more technical, it's, it's moving along three axes. If it moved up to this, it would be moving along three axes. But uh, every piece still moves along only two axes at a time. Which is the same as normal chess, you know, you can move along X and Y. But uh, we'll go ahead and take this attack. You know, just showing you where the movements are that are available to it. Got a diagonal up here we can attack to, down here. Those are open. We'll go ahead and uh, castle the king here. Which again, it's, it's not going to be done in one move at the moment because it's I didn't program it in. But uh, you would just move this king two squares over here, and then move this rook down, and that's castled. Now some people have asked uh, why this square is where the king is, and this one's where the queen is. How come the king isn't all the way at the top and all the way at the bottom, right? But those. Those squares are not actually that protected. This is the most protected square right here. Um, you cannot get to this square from anywhere but this level. You have to be on this level in order to get to this square. But the queen can move, I mean, if she's got the room to do so, the queen can move all the way out here. The queen can move all the way to the other side of the board, right? This is now you're on in enemy territory, and that's in just one move for her. That covers all the moves, or all the pieces, how they move. Uh, in the future, next time I show this with updates, there will be uh, more of the special cases like the pawns moving two pieces um, on their first move, for example. Like this pawn uh, is supposed to be able to move to this square if it wants, and this pawn can also move to this square on, on their first turns if there's nothing in the way. Um, and there's a couple other pieces like that. But that's it.